Hey guys, it's Ghosty. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm sharing my favorite movies of 2022. I literally just said this in my last video, or was it the video before that? But I just said that 2022 was such a great year for horror films, but also we got some pretty great other films as well. I feel like 2022 was just the start of more years to come with a lot of great movies, especially original horror films. As per usual, I'm late to the game and it's taken a whole month for me to actually get this list together. I'm finally ready to share five horror movies that I love, four horror horror movies that I liked a lot, and three non-horror movies that I also love. Let's start with the honorable mentions. This is a strong first feature length. First time director, Mimi Cave. I really enjoyed the pacing of this film. The first half is sort of a rom-com, and the second half of the film is just full-on thriller. We have chase scenes, some gross stuff going on, some cannibalistic gross stuff going on. The soundtrack is so good and I really enjoyed the editing, working with the cinematography. I think that visually this movie is pretty stunning. One of my biggest issues with this movie though and it was such a problem for me that it kind of um, ruined my enjoyment of the film. Probably would have enjoyed it more if I felt that they cared about the character i can't remember her name but um she ends up saving the day she's the black woman character they literally wrote her to help the main character and she has nothing else it was just so lazy and it's also just very telling when we talk about inclusivity is that we're not always being inclusive <laughs> we're not always doing that right that's, that's an issue i have with this film but otherwise it is a great film Going in cold to this movie makes it for a great first time watch, but honestly, it's good either way. I unfortunately had a little bit of the film spoiled for me via trailer. It showed me that Justin Long was the character in the movie. So for the f whole first half of Barbarian, I was like, wait, where's Justin's Long character? But it didn't ruin it too much for me, honestly. There was still so much surprise. A lot of great jump scares. But Barbarian is really strong because it is very original. Love Tess as a character. And I also just really appreciated that we, as an audience, were forced to empathize with the creature by the end of the film. It kind of like leaves you with some heaviness in your heart. Violet Night delivers all of the Christmas goodness and a heist film, home invasion film. We get it all. I love the cast. The guy who plays Santa. I'm a big fan of what he's doing with Santa. I love this like very real, jaded by the world version of Santa. This was great, it was a lot of fun. Laughing in the theater throughout the whole time. Top 10, one of my favorite theater experiences of 2022. Master brings New England folk horror to a college campus through the perspective of black women in academia, specifically Ivy League academia. And we get the perspectives of a college professor and a freshman. That theater experience was also very cool because I got to partake in a Q&A with the director afterwards and she kind of shared her experience in Ivy League College and how that influenced the story. I wish that more people would see it and more and more people would talk about it. I believe it's on Amazon Prime. Regina Hall. I already love Regina Hall but after this performance I realized that she is not getting enough flowers in um, Hollywood right now. She's just not getting enough credit because that woman is so fucking talented. She brought so much to this role. A lot of the movie's strongest points are with her on screen. One of the biggest reasons why I love this film and it's made my honorable mentions list is because of the ending. Regina Hall gives this long speech to a room full of colleagues and friends. It's not a perfect film. I think mostly that just it just suffers from like maybe the indie budget. And now it's time to get into my actual favorite horror films of 2022. We got our long awaited orphan prequel and who would have thought that this would be so insane and in such a different direction but still works so well as a prequel. It blew me out of water in the sense that it didn't rest 
too much and like exposition. It wasn't just such a lame basic origin story. Obviously Esther is just perfect in this and Julia Stiles and I just really appreciate the dynamic between the two of them throughout the whole film. Julia Stiles character is more badass and like she intimidates Esther and that's interesting because it's almost like there's multiple villains. The satire in this movie is so perfect, down to the title cards. It's so absurd. It's like the movie feels light and goofy and maybe a little mysterious for a couple minutes and then it starts to get a little weird and then it goes absurd and then it's just a ride into the fucking, literally the fucking end. That ending, it reminds me so much of Midsummer, the combination of the score, which the score throughout the whole movie banged, by the way. I feel like this movie will fall into the brand of ignorant people with money deserve to be made fun of. And like I said in my last video reviewing Glass Onion, I really just fucking love that brand of dark comedy. Pearl made me love X more and I'm looking forward to Maxine even more. What Ty West is doing all together is perfect and it's going to go down as a huge, huge cult classic. Influences from early Hollywood, the bright Technicolor, Wizard of Oz is like one of my favorite films and I immediately picked up on the references. Mia Goth just commits to this character. Pearl is brutal and horny and I'm talking about the person and the movie, honestly. Jordan Peele made the sci-fi horror adventure film that I did not know I fucking needed. It is so evident that he understands horror and he knows how to be, takes what he's inspired by and makes his own work out of it. And I've shared that already, but um, I just love that so much. Um, the script, symbolism, the score, the story, sound design. The sound design just blows me away because I, I can imagine that being very meticulous and also i could see how easy it could be to just like not be intentional about sound design this nigga don't miss i love jordan peele i'm so excited to exist in a lifetime of jordan peele releases this list is not ranked but nope is my number one film of 2022 it, it almost happened instantly oh my god the black phone i forgot to talk about the black phone oh. Scott Derrickson. I really thought that he could only pull off straight ghost films, but then we get this ghost film by kidnapper thing. Ethan Hawke is a great grabber. <laughs> it's weird to say, but like, that's the character's name. Oh, and I just love that it's a brother-sister story. It's really nice to see some sibling ship in a horror film and not have it all be about romance or whatever or some like that. I also do make time to see movies that are not in that genre and this year I saw a couple that I really enjoyed and I want to mention as well. I'm not going to go too much into depth that I just want to throw them out here because I, I want to share my love for them. Everything Everywhere All At Once. I saw that in the movie theaters twice. When I first saw it I, the movie came on, I smiled, and I didn't stop smiling until I started crying. And then I was smiling again, and then I was crying again. For personal reasons, I felt like there were messages within the theme of the film that I just needed to hear, I needed to be reminded of. Um, I think generally, as a society, we're really fucked up after the pandemic. Could really just take a page from that movie. Hunk for Jesus was such a pleasant surprise. I thought it was gonna be a straight comedy, but it was a dark comedy. That shit was dark in, this, in a very, in a satirical way. Regina Hall again, just killing it. We get so much truth about the black church. Also addressing the very hot topic of homophobia within the black community. Knives Out, Glass Onion. I know I don't have to stick on this one too long because I literally just covered this on my channel. But yeah, that's my shit. Janelle Monet, Benoit Blanc. <laughs> that's my 2022, guys. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, you can give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. You can always hit the bell to be notified whenever I release new content. Follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at ghosty underscore, Twitter at ghosty, and letterbox at ghosty. I'll see you guys in the next video.